It was the ancient Chinese philosopher known as Confucius who once wisely said that signs and symbols rule the world, not words nor laws. Welcome back, my friends. We are exposed to thousands of images daily, bombarded by them, really. Many of them symbols and advertisements, others art and pictures. This is very much a modern occurrence, but there is a recurring archetypal image, one that has haunted men for ages, that of the serpent. The semblance of this creature was feared and even venerated in a plethora of cultures. We have Quetzalcoatl, or the Plume Serpent, who was worshipped in Mesoamerica since around 1200 AD. This feathered serpent became the patron god of priests and merchants, as well as the god of learning itself, science, agriculture, and the creative arts. Even Venus, the Morning Star, also known as Lucifer, was also associated with Quetzalcoatl. And in Asia, this theme of the wisdom of great serpents continues with the Chinese mythos. The dragons they worshipped were powerful and wise beasts that were thought to bring good fortune. And even today, dragon dances are performed to chase away evil spirits. In Hinduism and Buddhism, there exists a race of semi-divine beings, half human and half cobra. They were shapeshifters that had the ability to take on the appearance of being fully man or fully cobra. Legend speaks of the god Brahma sending the Nagas to the nether regions underground, forming vast kingdoms there, and are still seen today as guardians or gatekeepers. This is very much in line with many inner earth conspiracies of the kingdom of Agartha or Shambhala, hidden deep beneath our feet, according to the ancient stories. So what is it about this ancient creature that's so compelling and so sacred? In Joseph Campbell's book titled The Power of Myth, he conceptualizes this serpent symbolism in a fascinating way. Quote, a constant image is that of the conflict of the eagle and the serpent. The serpent bound to the earth, the eagle in spiritual flight. Isn't that conflict something we all experience? And then when the two amalgamate, we get a wonderful dragon, a serpent with wings. All over the earth, people recognize these images. Unquote. As Campbell mentions the serpent's association with being bound to the earth and his chimeric image of a serpent with wings, I cannot help but think of the serpent in Eden in Genesis, who, according to the text, was responsible for the temptation and subsequent banishment of humans from Eden. The serpent, who previously had wings, was given a curse of his own by God, forcing the scheming reptile crawl on its belly, a sort of binding to the earth in a way. Westerners tend to regard the reptile as representing forbidden or even hidden knowledge, which makes it an ideal symbol for the mystery religions and secret societies that populate our world. They seem to have formed alliances with these beings, with their heresies and rituals. Whether or not they actually physically contact a real creature is irrelevant. They are in union with them symbolically. And that transcends our physical world. But make no mistake, those who join in their esoteric cause with this brood of vipers will certainly share in their fate. The prophetic words of Revelation chapter 20 verse 2 are very clear. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. There's a growing confusion coming over the face of the earth. 
I think we would all do well to slow down, pay attention to what's happening, and open the Bible and appreciate its wisdom. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. There's much more to come, and I will see you guys in the next one, but in the meantime, go ahead and warm up by the fire. <laughs>